Hi there, in this video I'm going to give you a tour around my HO scale model railway that I built in my home office space and talk about how I operate it and some of its design features. Now a lot of traditional layouts that you see in model railway magazines and on the internet are built in very traditional model railway spaces, often dedicated layout spare rooms or garages or perhaps basements. Uh, but the reality for most people out there is that they don't have an entire room de to dedicate to a hobby and particularly for a lot of young people here in Australia owning your own home is often a far distant dream a lot of us are renting and don't have ideal spaces to work with um, so being able to build a layout alongside other things in another room is really beneficial if you can manage it now it might sound a bit crazy, but this layout really takes up no space at all because it's all built in what would otherwise be empty space on shelf work above the computers running around the wall of the entire room. A big advantage about this particular room is that it has a stairwell, which means that the railway can run all around the edge of the room without having to have a lifting gate or a removable bridge. Now as you can see I haven't added any scenery to this layout but there's certainly no reason why you couldn't do so on a layout of this kind of design. For me this layout has been a bit of a proof of concept and a place to test ideas. I've always known I won't be in this house for particularly long so it was a good spot to try some things out. Now if you have a look at the track plan the main station Lorikeet is down in the bottom left hand corner and the line continues as a double track main line up around the north side of the layout down to Butcher Bird Junction where it splits into two branch lines one that runs along the banister of the stairwell to a location that I've called Banister and the other continues all the way around the wall to the south end of the layout to a location called Ironbark and from there there is a connection back to Lorikeet again I normally enjoy running my trains point to point but if I'm running along goods train for instance like I am at the moment I'll often run it all the way around. If you want to study the track plan in more detail just pause the video but otherwise I'm going to show you around the rest of the layout. So this here is the main station at Lorikeet. There are three platforms here or well, at least you can imagine there are three platforms there plus an extra siding that I usually store rail motors in. Uh, down around the south end here there's a goods yard where I usually store my four-wheel wagons and older rolling stock and there's a couple of sidings that are usually used for layover of locomotives. Now the layout runs on straight 12 volts DC. It's controlled by a number of these homemade control panels that I built. I've already made a more detailed video about these so I'll put a link to that in the video description if you'd like to have a look. Looking north from Lorikeet we have the double track main line, then there's an arrivals loop which is double-ended, and then two dead-end sidings which I use to store my long goods consist, which is just coming up through on the up main here. Around the north side of the layout here, the line crosses the window in this long double-track viaduct. The edging on this viaduct is just relatively thin balsa wood. It's not all that structural, it's just to hold rolling stock on the top if there's a minor derailment. Then around here is Butcher Bird Junction. I always imagined this would be a long curved island platform. There's a crossover at the up end here so you can have short running or the down line here is actually bi-directional so you can overtake a train here. And then on the inside of the curve here is the Stairwell North Locomotive Depot which also features the passenger car sidings. Then we've got the junction over here with the banister line running out there and the main line heading out along the wall and over to the bookshelf tunnel there. Here at banister I imagine the platform would be on the left hand side there. Then you've got a run around loop and a single goods siding. 
and you'll notice that access to the locomotive depot is only from here at Bannister, so all trains have to reverse direction in the platform here to access the locomotive depot and the car sidings. As you can see, it's a very long way down into the stairs from here. There's only ever been one derailment, which was fairly minor and sent some sh shipping containers over the edge. But other than that, we haven't had any problems. And then here at the south end of the layout is Ironbark. The platform would be on the right hand road there, which leads to a dead end with a crossover to allow running around a train here. One thing that I designed quite carefully, and I'm really glad that I did, was to make sure that all the platform roads here were of a standard length so that you didn't end up awkwardly overhanging onto the main line with certain consists. So platform one, which is the track on the far right there, is designed to hold four passenger cars and one locomotive. Platform two holds three and one locomotive and so on and so forth. So you can make up a train elsewhere and be sure that it's going to fit when you arrive here. There was no space for crossovers down the far end, so all trains here have to be shunted by a pilot locomotive, uh, which actually adds a lot of operational interest. Likewise over here at Stairwell North, I made sure that the length of train you can fit into these car sidings also fits in the platform at Bannister so that you can easily dock out there and run a train in without being over length. The turntable itself is a great way to store a lot of locomotives in a small space and obviously be able to turn them as well. I built it from a Walther's kit of a US prototype and Australianized or Victorianized it quite a bit. It's still far too long to be prototypical for Victoria but I think the overall effect is quite good. I'd say one design lesson I've definitely learned is that really short sidings like these two in the corner here are pretty much useless unless you've got a really specific idea of what you want to do with them. So these two I sometimes shunt maintenance of way wagons into or whatever but kind of an annoying spot to get to and usually end up at just not using them at all. An exception would be somewhere like this where I'm frequently putting locomotives of a, a known length and it's actually quite useful to have a number of short sidings. Probably the biggest lesson that I've learnt is that wire, particularly when you're using recycled wire of all sorts of different sizes, takes up a lot of space when you build complicated control panels. It's absolutely everywhere And when I get the opportunity to build another layout like this, I'll definitely be building some kind of cable trays or way of containing all of this, because as you can see, it is completely out of hand. Now, as I mentioned before, this layout was only ever going to be a temporary thing. And by the time you watch this video, it won't exist anymore. I'm moving house in the next couple of weeks and my job starting tomorrow is to start pulling all of this up and putting all my rolling stock in boxes. So, it's a bit of a sad time, but it's also exciting with lots of possibilities for other things I can be doing for my next project. And I've certainly had a lot of fun running this layout over the probably 18 months or so that it's been fully functional.